There's one thing I wanted to say about static electricity. You want to think of it as being an electrical action, but it is not the useful current like the one produced with magnetism. Magnetism produces the current that we use in large numbers. In other words, to light our lights, to run our machines, our washing machines, our motors. It really doesn't create electricity in any quantity that we can use. A thing can get charged with electricity. For instance, when you slide across the seat of your automobile and you touch the handle on the door, you get a little shock. You take off your dress and the nylon slip and you get sparks if the weather's dry. You comb your hair and your hair all stands out. This is all the results of electrical charges. But we can't harness that kind of electricity to do anything. We can't put it to work. We can't run a motor with it. So, current electricity, electricity produced by magnetism, is dynamic. It's current electricity. It's electricity that we can run down wires and do things with. Static electricity is a kind of electricity that exists in a still form, producing charges that can be measured. Various companies that have smokestacks, they are running the smoke up through plates, and the plates have static electricity on them. And the static electricity charges the particles, which are then drawn over to other plates, and then the plates are washed down with water to wash the, the soot away. On this slide that shows a single atom, it says, according to this theory, all matter is electrical in nature. The atom is divided into protons or particles that are positively charged, and electrons or particles that are negatively charged. Now, this will apply to our current electricity also, because the flow of electricity is a flow of electrons. When electricity flows along a wire, it's the electrons that are in the copper atoms that are doing the moving. Now, some atoms don't like their electrons to get away, and other atoms don't mind their electrons switching with the next atom. Because when you have a piece of copper wire and you want electrons to flow down that wire, all the electrons are within the wire to start with. Every little atom of copper has all of its little electrons there. So when we say we're going to produce a flow of electrons, all we do is to do something to disturb the electrons that are already present in the copper atoms. All you do is to push the electrons that are already within the wire, you push them along. So the electrons are something we don't manufacture, but we just push around from place to place. And in pushing them around, they do things for us. On this slide, we're showing an electrical conductor as being a substance in which the planetary electrons move easily from one atom to the next. Such free electrons are plentiful in most metals and in carbon, which therefore are good conductors. Now, this is what makes some substances conductors and some substances insulators. Wood, for instance, dry wood is an insulator. Plastic, Bakelite, China, glass. Now they all have atoms which contain protons and electrons, but they are very tightly bound so that the electrons tend to stay close to the proton. And therefore, they don't move easily from one atom to the next. However, copper, aluminum, and most metals and carbon they have a free interchange. In other words, this electron here, for instance, is going around this atom, but it wouldn't care whether it switched and went over into this one and went around on that one. So the electrons move between the protons. Now, metals, copper, aluminum, brass, most all the metals, are not concerned over whose electron is surrounding their proton. And that's why we call them and refer to them as free electrons. They're free to move from one place to the other. Insulators 
do not have free electrons. Therefore, you cannot make them into a wire to conduct electricity. 